In this video, we'll go over the solution to leak code question number one, two sum, and go over both a brute force and an optimized O of n solution. So let's go over the problem first. We are given two arguments, nums, which is an array of integers, and target, which is just an integer. Given those two arguments, we need to return the indices of two integers in the array that add up to target. We can also assume that there is exactly one solution and that the same number can't be used twice. So before I go into the O of n solution, let's first look at the brute force solution, which is just to calculate the sum of every combination of pairs in the array until you find the sum that equals target. So for example, if this is the array, we'd have to calculate the sum of each number with every other number in the array. So starting with 1, we can't use the same number twice, so we'd start with 1 plus 2, which is 3, then 1 plus 3, 1 plus 4, and finally 1 plus 5. If the target wasn't in any of those, we'd have to now calculate all the sums that include 2. We already calculated 1 plus 2, so we don't need to calculate 2 plus 1. And again, we can't use 2 and 2, so we start with 2 plus 3, which is 5, then 2 plus 4, then 2 plus 5. Following the same logic, for 3, we'd start with 3 plus 4, then 3 plus 5, and for 4, it's just 4 plus 5. We don't need to do the last row, because all the combinations for 5 have already been calculated here. Now, this solution works, but the problem is that this runs in O of n squared time. If you're not sure why this is O of n squared, skip to the end of the video, and I'll explain why that is. But there is a way to solve this in O of n time, and the key is to realize that for each number in the array, there is only one other number that can be added to it to reach the target, so it's unnecessary to check every single combination. In other words, instead of thinking of it as x plus y equals target, and trying every single combination of x and y, because we already know what the target is, for any given number, x, there is only one other number, y, that satisfies this equation, and that number will be target minus x. We can use this fact and combine it with a hash table, which can look up values in constant time, to now devise an algorithm that only has to traverse the array once. Now let's look at the code and see how this is implemented. Let's say this array on the left is the nums array. Let's also say that the target is 10, so we need to pick two numbers in the array that add up to 10 and return the indices. The first step is to create a hash table, or dictionary as it's called in Python, and we'll call it seen because it'll hold all the numbers in the array that we've already seen as we traverse it. Since ultimately, we need to return the indices of the numbers, the dictionary key will be the number itself, and the dictionary value will be its index. We'll then start the loop at index 0, so the current number is 2. We then subtract 2 from the target, 10, and store the result in a variable called diff, since it's the difference. 10 minus 2 equals 8, so we know that 8 is the only number that will equal 10 when added to 2. The next line checks if diff is a key in the dictionary seen. In other words, we're asking, have we seen 8 before somewhere in this array? The most important thing here is that checking for a key in a dictionary using this syntax runs in constant time. I'll come back to this point later, but for now just keep that in mind. So since this is only the first number and the dictionary is empty, this will be false and we'll skip to the else block. We then record what we just saw for future reference. The number at the ith index is 2, so we'll make that the key, and set its value to i, its index, which is 0. So we create a key of 2, which maps to a value of 0. The next number is 4, and the difference with 10 will be 6. Now we ask, have we seen 6 before in this array? The answer is no, so again, we'll record what we just saw. The key will be 4, and the value is index 1. The next number is 9, and the difference is 1. 1 is not a key in the dictionary, so again, we'll log the key value pair 9 and 2. Next up is 6, and the difference is 4. Now we have found it in the dictionary. 4 is a key. Now that we've found the pair of numbers, what's left is to return the indices. We'll return them in an array, and the first element will be the value contained at the key of 4, so that's 1. The second element will be i, which is the index of the current number we're on, so that's 3. So we return an array, that has 1 and 3, and if we double check here, 1 and 3 are in fact the indices of 4 and 6, which do add up to 10. In the worst case, this algorithm will only have to traverse the array once, so it runs in O of n time. 
Now, going back to what I was saying about this line here, it's important that you don't do something like if diff in scene.keys because scene.keys will return an iterable of all the keys in the dictionary. Then, to check if diff is in there, we would have to iterate through all the elements in the array anyway. Instead, by using this syntax, what Python actually does is that it uses the normal way of looking up hash table values by calculating the hash of the key and jumping straight to it to see if there's anything there. So the fact that this line of code runs in constant time is the key to running this entire algorithm in linear time. Now, going back to why the first solution was O of n squared, if the length of the array is n, then the first iteration took n minus 1 steps, the second iteration took n minus 2 steps, and so on until we reach 1 for the last iteration. So how many steps is that total? We can use this formula here that tells us that the sum from 1 to n is n times n plus 1 over 2, or n squared plus n over 2. So to find the sum to n minus 1, let's take n squared plus n over 2 and just subtract n from it. After a bit of manipulation, we can see that this ends up being n squared minus n over 2. And since with big O notation, we only take the dominant term and drop constants, this ends up being O of n squared.